Hi, okay, so in this lecture, we're going to look at texturing the window. So what we're going to do is we're going to separate a version of the window. So we're going to save it as a separate object, both the window frame and the window. Uh, so what we need to do is just select the window and the window pane, the glass. Uh, let's just make sure we've got both of those selected. Yep, looks like it. Okay, and then we save as, save as selected, this one here. And we just do uh, hut window for substance because we're not going to delete it off here we're just going to save a version of it so we can paint it up in substance painter and then when we've exported the textures we can just drop it onto the window and onto the window uh, glass when we get it into unity hut window for substance that's fine that's all you need to call it and uh, so we, we we can bring it in uh, click save like that go to where you saved it, there it is, and bring it in, open, and there it is. Okay, so, effect pivot, center to object. Okay, so we've got them both there. Turn on the grid. Let's just move this close to zero so that it's um, where we need it to be. It doesn't have to be exact, just roughly. And there we go, that would be fine. Now we're gonna save this out as one object, but it's got two different types of material on this, and that's fine, because we're gonna use a different shader for the glass, and uh, obviously a different one for the window frame, so we don't need to make it a multi-sub object uh, material. So we can just go ahead and export this. Let's just reset the X-Form on each one. Reset X-Form on that, just collapse the stack. And the same for that. Same for the glass. Collapse the stack. Okay, so it's just there. And we're going to file export as an FBX. And we're going to go into the uh, raw projects, meshes, and FBX here. And we're just going to put window, or just call it hut window, like that. That'll, that'll be fine. Um, and click save. Yep, yeah, should all be still be set up. And click OK. There we go. Now go into Substance Painter. OK, before we jump into Substance, I want, I've decided I want a sort of a really rough painted look on our window. So it looks like it was painted and it's just all flaking off. And I found this on textures.com. And it sits perfectly within the description that I want to um, that I want to that I want to create for our window. Um, as for the window, I'm just going to paint it within Substance Painter, so I don't need anything for that. Um, but this will be perfect for the frame for the wood. So I downloaded it, and I've already got rid of these uh, lines because I don't want these lines on the window. So I've just painted them out. And I've shown you how to do this already, so you don't need to to uh, you don't need to see me do it again. I'm just using the clone tool, um, and I'm going to save this out as a separate image, and bring it into Bitmap to Material, and just create a normal map, uh, the usual maps, and spit them out so we can bring them into Substance Painter. And again, you know how to do that. So if you're doing the same, if you're copying me, just find a, a wood texture like this uh, with with flaky paint on it paint out all the anomalies that you don't want take it to b2m and create your maps that you can bring into substance so in the next part you're going to see me bring them all into substance painter so i'll see you there okay so here we are in substance painter about to bring in the hut window that we exported from 3d studio max i'm also including a uh, a height map, a normal map, a roughness map, and a base color map that I created using that uh, painted wood texture I showed you in B2M. 
So I've just clicked on add and I've added those files here. Next click OK. Here you can see our window, which is pretty cool. And if I go to textures, I should see hot window, hot window. Yeah, it is all my window maps that I brought in down here. Okay, before we get started, we are going to have to change the uh, shader within Substance so we can use transparency on our windows. And to do that, you just go over here to shape where it says shader here. Click on this, click on this button here. And we want uh, with alpha test, I think that's the one we want alpha blending. Layering, spec gloss, velvet. Uh, okay, these are all the different. Uh, these are all the different shaders you can use within uh, Substance when you're creating your materials. Um, I think we need uh, with Alpha Blending, PBR Metal Rough with Alpha Blending. So check that. So now we. We can see down in the texture set list we have two. Um, we can turn the glass off and we can turn the frame off so we can work on them individually, which is pretty nice. Um, yep, now we need to bake our texture sets here and we can add a bit of occlusion there. And we can add opacity here. So make sure you add that to your list opacity there. That allows us to put opacity onto our objects. And we're going to do that on the window, obviously. So now bake the textures here. Click on this bake tech. You know how to do all this. I've shown you already, but I'm showing you again. So I'll just bake textures. Uh, we don't need an ID map. And you can bake all texture sets for both these objects this time. So click on that and then let it do its thing. And there we are. All nicely baked. Fantastic. Okay, so now let's work on the window frame to start with. So let's turn off the glass down here. Just tick that little button there and the glass will disappear. Uh, so this is our wooden frame. Get rid of that. And uh, let's create our first fill layer. So add a fill layer. There we go. <clears throat> and we're going to go straight. We're not going to put wood underneath it because I don't want the wood to really come through. So I'm going to go for the next thing on top, which is the hut, the hut window paint base color here. So I'm going to drag that into the base color over here like that and straight away we get some interesting results and we don't necessarily want it all going in the right direction in the same direction um, in fact it's better if it's, it's not going in the same direction we can create several layers to turn the UVs and so it looks a bit more interesting I think the windowsill looks pretty good like that I think, which is quite nice. That looks the resolution of, of this looks fairly low. We may have to revert to a 2K bake. Um, let's just go and have a look what we've got over here. See, that's one. Let's crank that up to 2K. Mm, yeah, it's much sharper, you see. Uh, looks pretty good so far just by doing that. 
Okay, so let's put the normal map on there. Hut window normal. Think. See that makes it look instantly gives it some bump bumpiness there. Uh, I don't want it to be glossy like that. I do have a roughness map which I created. That should take it down. Or yeah, there you go. So that's taking it down to a sort of a, a subtle sheen, as opposed to full-on gloss. I mean, we could go in and create a black and white image from the paint, so that the paint is shiny and the sort of rotten wood underneath is not. And we can do that just by using. We could even put this probably. Let's try putting this in the roughness see what we get so what I've done there is I've put the actual um, base color into the roughness just to see what we get and I, no it's not working as I expected it needs to be sort of full-on black and white there's too much variation in the uh, in the diff in the base color so we can just put our um, put our Roughness back in there. There you go, that's better. We also have a height a height map, and I think this might just make it a bit too high to be perfectly honest. But let's try this. Okay, no, that's good. That makes it pop. Do you see how it pops? I quite like that. Gives it gives it some real definition okay so what I'm going to do what I want to do is just to make it look authentic I want to make the see the horizontal bars look pretty good I want to mask out the vertical ones and rotate the UVs so that they all uh, so that it looks like it was painted vertically this is the, the attention to detail I was talking about but to do that we're going to have to create a a black mask actually you can probably create a white mask and we then we can paint blackness into it uh, so if you make sure that's on black choose a nice sharp uh, we don't have to be too accurate here because it is the same texture so you know we can just paint it out like this Any sort of vertical beam, oops. You know, holding shift will give you a much more accurate line. So if you click, hold shift, drag it down, keep it straight, that'll give you a nice straight edge, which is what you want, like that. Get the sides. Well, we won't be seeing this here so it doesn't matter too much so we're just masking oops got the top of that so we just want a nice diagonal strip there there we go same over here. What we'll do is just do a couple bits and then we'll set it up to see what it looks like, see if it's going to work. And if it does, we'll do the rest of it. I mean, it should work pretty well. Okay, so I'll just mask it out like this. Just keep doing, yeah, I'll put it on fast forward, but. You know, you should do the whole two sides here. Okay, so you get the idea. I'm just gonna, let's just paint the edge. Just looks neat. Okay, so that's cool. So not, we're gonna do these bits in here as well. 
um, but now we're just going to try it out see what happens so we're going to I'm actually going to duplicate this layer duplicate and then we're just going to flip this mask here invert I should yeah and then so it's just those and then we're going to get our paint and we're going to rotate the UVs around like this so it looks like we've got a vertical so we can just type 180 in there Dink. okay so now it looks like our paint is going vertically and that works really well it just gives it a, really, a nice more realistic look we need to do the same hmm okay if I undo that yes okay so we don't need to mask the inside of it okay let me just redo the UV rotation okay so this is the challenge fix this down here so we have the bottom layer coming through on that and on that side you can see that the orientation is wrong and I want you to paint the masks for these vertical strips here then you can choose whether they stay horizontal on the cross or they go vertical on the cross it's entirely up to you um, so on each one of these make sure it's running in the right direction and just generally go over the model and anywhere you want the paint to change direction you know paint inside the um, the mask accordingly so I'm gonna pause the video here and I'm gonna come back uh, with mine done and I hope you've done the same so I'll see you in a moment okay so there's mine all nicely uh, rotated and all the verticals painted in I left the horizontals as they were and then just made all my verticals go vertical which is pretty cool and looks a lot more authentic a lot more realistic and having these little cracks in the paint sort of really gives it a sort of old look but there's another layer we want to put on we're in a forest here we're not going to get away with just paint i want to give it a bit of green so we're going to use our trusty moss fluff and put it on top like that so it covers it all um, quite nicely then we're going to put a black mask on top of that um, we're just going to paint into it a little bit here and there not too much don't go too crazy with this this is one of those where you could you know go, just go too mad too crazy with it you just want a subtle green sort of in the corners let's make our brush small here just to give it a bit of you know yes I am at one with nature and it's starting to take control so you know we're doing a bit of that really in the corners you know I know we're not going to see it but underneath um, you know this paint works pretty pretty well uh, destroyed by the elements basically now we can see this by put, just putting a bit of moss here there you know in the cracks in the corners again like I said not too much just give it a bit of a sense that you know that um, nature is coming to get it if it hasn't already uh, it just makes it feel more very much you know a lot more realistic and the player's not really going to stand there and take that much notice really of these sort of things it's going to accept it because it's what it should be like now if it wasn't you know, if it didn't have these uh, these um, little details then perhaps the player would stop and go oh, that doesn't look right it would it wouldn't sit into the mind as much as it does if it's you know if it's more authentic that's the, that's the that's the secret of great art you kind of look at it and you think that looks fantastic you don't know why you know well artists know why but the, the, the panel layer generally just thinks it looks so beautiful and um, and it's these details that make that difference um, 
you know they don't necessarily know why or how but this is you know and it's this for this reason you know like i say just very subtle that gives you a hint of green which is quite nice and um you know nothing too much so a bit bit along the sort of corner there i think there we go i'm not going to do any more to the to the window than this to the window frame i should say you know, i'm just going to leave it it's kind of speaks for itself it's pretty pretty mucky pretty beaten up paints flaking off um I decided that currently our hut doesn't give away any sort of sense of time. Is it medieval? Is it modern? And I kind of, with windows like this and some paint, it's kind of a bit more engineered. So it's a bit more modern, you know, hut. That's that's kind of starting to decay, basically. That's the premise I'm going for. So that's it for the frame. In the next lecture, we're going to uh, tackle the glass so I'll see you there